this life, of her life, as well as who had really influenced her to gain something and to voice up against the norms of the society. So first of all, she thanks all the people of the world. She says, thank you to everyone for your continued support and love. Thank you for the letters and cards that I still receive from all around the world. Your kind and encouraging words strengthens and inspires me. When this girl Malala was shot in head and she was admitted to a hospital and she was under the stage of recovery. That time people from all nook and corner of the world, they send their greetings and wishes of recovery and encouraging her and really strengthening her willpower to do something. So for that very cause, Yusuf, this Malala Yusufzai, she thanks the people who showed continued support when she was in really need of people's cooperation and love. Then she says, this is very, very important, where Malala, she refers to her family. She says, I would like to thank my parents for their unconditional love. Now, in a speech, she addresses her family members for showering upon her unconditional love. Thank you to my father. Now she addresses her father. And why does she address her father? Why she is very much thankful and gratified towards her father? She gives a very interesting reason here for not clipping my wings. Clipping my wings means, what do you mean by clipping the wings? If you clip the wings of the birds, that means you are restricting the flight of it. So if, you know, symbolically, if someone clips your, you know, wings, it means that restricting your freedom. Restricting freedom. So Malala is very much gratified and acknowledged that her father had continued support for her cause. And he did not restrict Malala at all. Being a girl, she was never ever being isolated from the family. But she was almost every time encouraged by her father. And she says, thank you to my mother for inspiring me to be patient and to be always speaking the truth which we strongly believe is the true message of Islam. Now she thanks her mother for continuously supporting her and making her continuously speaking the truth and stand up for a truth and a cause. Then she thanks her mother. Then this is very very important and also thank you to all my wonderful teachers. See Malala, she is so much gratified and she acknowledges that her teachers, they had a profound role to play in her life. So much so that she says, they inspired me to believe in myself and be brave. So here Malala confesses that her teachers instilled bravery in her. So much so that you can imagine the situation in Pakistan and in Taliban and in the Swat Valley where everything is filled with terrorism. She dared to voice against that age-old social stigma. Why? Because of her father, because of her mother and the teachers who instills the quality of courage and bravery in her. So this is very, very touching, heart-touching and inspirational children. Then she, you know, continues her speech and she says that I'm proud, well, in fact, I'm very proud to be the first person, the first Pakistani as the youngest person to receive this award. Malala here, she expresses her pride to be the first Pastan. Pastan means, uh, you know, this Indo-Iranian language. People or the member of people of Pastan community who resides in southern Afghanistan and in western part of Pakistan. So she says that I'm the first member of this Pastan speaking community and the youngest person of Pakistan to receive this award because it is not an easy thing to get such a big award as Nobel Peace Prize Award. You have to really do something, you have to really do really something great in order to achieve these sorts of awards. But she, here she says that I am very much, I take pride to tell that I am the youngest person to get this Nobel Peace Prize Award. Then she says, along with that, I am pretty certain that I am also the first recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize 
wife who still fights with her younger brothers. That means Malala had two younger siblings. She had two younger brothers and she was still fighting with her brothers. Means that means she was still very young to fight with her siblings. That means she was too young to receive the prize, receive the award. I want there to be peace everywhere but my brothers and I are still working on that. See, Malala's work does not stop there after receiving that award. She says that I will continue pursuing my work for the children's right and female education. Then she proceeds further. I am also honored to receive this award together with Kailas Satyarthi. We find that Malala shared the stage with Kailas Satyarthi. Kaila Satyarthi is an Indian reformer who fought against child labor and he advocated universal right to education. So the, the occasion became all the more special when both of them, Malala Yusufzai and this Indian reformer Kaila Satyarthi, they were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize because both of them fought for the same cause. So twice as long, in fact, than I have been alive. She says that I am very much honored to receive the, this award along with Kailas Satyarthi. I am proud that we can work together. So here Malala expresses her deeper desire to work with Kailas Satyarthi. And we can work together and show the world that the Indian and the Pakistani, they can work together and achieve the goals to children's. Right, because both of them, one is Pakistani, that is Malala, and the other one, Kaila Satyarthi, they fought for the same cause, and she says that it would be wonderful to show the entire world how would it, it would be possible for a Pakistani and an Indian to work together for a same cause, that is for the children's rights. Then she says, Dear brothers and sisters, I was named after the inspirational Malalai of my world, who is the Pastan John of Earth. Now then she tells the entire world how she received the name Malala. She says that she was named after the Malalai of Manwand. In fact, popularly known as Malala, who is a folk hero who fought against the British. And she says that the word Malala means grief stricken. So this is very interesting. What is the meaning of the name Malala? She has said this that the name of the meaning of the name Malala is grief stricken. That means very saddened. Saddened, sorrowful. Then she makes it a little bit funny by adding another point to it and she says that in order to lend some happiness to it, my grandfather would always call me Malala, the happiest girl in the world. Now see, Malala says that since my name's meaning is the grief-stricken person, a deeply sorrowful, deeply grieved person, but in order to cheer me up, in order to light up my mood, my grandfather used to call me Malala, the happiest girl of the world, and today I am very happy that we are together fighting for an important cause. Now Malala says that I am very happy that me along with my grandfather, we in collaboration are fighting for a very important cause. This award is not just for me. It is for those forgotten children who want education. Malala dedicates the award not to herself, but she says that this award can be dedicated to those forgotten ones, to those ignorant children who want education. Because usually in some parts or some countries, in other countries, some children, some people, some female, they are still deprived of proper education and the proper rights. So she says, this award is for those frightened children who want peace. Just like Malala, living in a Swat Valley in Pakistan, she desires, she longs for peace. There are so many children exactly like Malala who longs for the same. It is for those voiceless children who want change. Why voiceless? Because those children that too much suppressed, they cannot voice against the age old norm and taboo. And here to stand up for their rights, Malala here makes a clear stand that she stands for children's right to raise a voice. It is not time to pity them. She says that it's not only sufficient to pity them. It is time to pity them. It is time to take action. So it becomes the last time, the last time. So 
it becomes the last time that we see a child deprived of education. So Malala here repeats the phrase the last time. Why? Because she does not wish to see the same condition further. She wants a change right then at that moment where children and female will be given their rights and they will be treated equal to men and they, will, they won't be deprived of education. I have found that people describe me in many different ways. So Malala here she shares her experience how she was being termed by different people around the world. She says some people call me the girl who was shot by the Taliban and some calls me the girl who fought for the rights and some people call me a Nobel laureate. Nobel laureate means the recipient of Nobel Peace Prize Award. So some people they think me Talibani, some people they consider me as an activist or a Nobel Peace Prize recipient. But she says that however my brother still call me that annoying bossy sister. As I told you she is still young and she had two younger brothers and who used to still fight with them and act bossy and make them do work. So she says that as far as I know I am just a committed and even stubborn person. As far as I am concerned I am a very simple girl who fights with her siblings every now and then. I am the only person simply a person who wants to see every child getting equal quality education, who wants to see women having equal rights and who wants peace in every corner of the world. Since she herself had gone through this situation, that's why she claims for three important things. First, she wants education, that two quality education. She wants women having equal rights and the third one, she, des she desires and longs for peace in every corner of the world. Why? Because she had not experienced these three things in her childhood. That's why she longs and she spoke for these things at the UN General Assembly. Education is one of the blessings of life. See, education is really a blessing in one's life and one of its necessities. It's a necessity. That has been my experience during the 17 years of my life. In my paradise home now, you know, she was, uh, Malala was 17 years old when she received the award. Then she says that in my paradise home, that is Suwak. Suwak Valley in Pakistan can be compared to a paradise and next to heaven because of its natural beauty. I always loved learning and discovering new things. She was a keen child who, learned, who wanted to learn and discover new things. I remember when my friends and I would decorate our hands with henna on special occasions. Like every other normal girl and woman, she used to decorate her hands with henna and instead of drawing flowers and patterns, see, with that henna, we generally draw the patterns and flowers on her wrist, on her hands. But she, her curiosity, instead of that, she used to write all mathematical formulas and equations on her wrist and her hands. That means she really had a thirst for quality education. We had a thirst for education. We had a thirst for education because our future was right there in that classroom. Right from the early childhood, she was aware of the fact that her future did not lie in her small confined room. Her future lied in the classroom ahead. We would sit and learn and read together. We loved to wear neat and tidy school uniforms and we would sit there with big dreams in our eyes. See, as every normal and ordinary children, she desired to wear neat and clean uniform and learn and discover new things every time. We wanted to make our parents proud, see. Like you all, each and every children have the desire to study well, to get a proper education and make their, children, their parents proud. Exactly here, Malala, she had a deeper desire to make her parents proud and prove that we could also excel in our studies. We as a female, we as a girl, we as a woman can also excel in studies and achieve those goals, which some people think only boys can because there is a serious gender discrimination right now also in different parts of the world. So she voices against it that even we as a girl can excel in studies and we are no less than men. But things did not remain the same but there was a twist in the scenario. When I was in SWAT, she experienced
experiences or you know she goes through a bitter experiences and she says that when i was in swad valley which was a place of tourism and beauty suddenly changed into a place of terrorism you all know the condition right now and in the past about the world how terrorism had dominated each and every domain of the politics and country a beautiful swad valley too was been dominated by terrorism and it changed into a place of terrorism from the place of paradise it was no more a paradise it was a state of terrorism i was just saying that more than 400 schools were destroyed she was just 10 years old a enthusiast to go to school and the when and to wear the school uniform but see when she was 10 years old that means almost 400 schools were destroyed and women were flogged miss flogged miss women were whipped and beaten up flogged miss beaten up beaten ah oh, women were beaten up you can imagine this scenario when the being a girl was a kind of suffering but it was a kind of curse so much so of women they were whipped beaten with a whip or a stick as a punishment and four hundred schools were destroyed demolished because the terrorism hardly supports education education went from being a right to being a crime forget about getting a crime you know a right to education it turned to a severe crime girls were stopped from going to school when my world suddenly changed my priority changed to all she had the priority to learn education but now girls were stopped to from going to school they were confined in the four corners of the house of the room and she says the scenario entirely changed so my priorities changed in course of time then she says i had two options she had two options this is very very interesting one was to remain silent in that and wait to be healed one was to remain silent in that area where it was dominated by terrorists and terrorism and the other option was to speak up and then be killed so both ways she had a chance to be killed to remain in the swad valley and to be killed one day unspoken dormant whereas she had the opportunity to speak up and again that to be killed so better she preferred to speak up against the social stigma and she says proudly that i chose the second one i decided to speak up she says i chose the second one that is to speak up and to be killed so here this is the children this is the end of malala's speech which is very very inspirational motivational and encouraging so we learn so many things from here so i just implore you all to read this chapter at least one and at least you yourself get motivated for a quality education for better education for thirst of human rights and so many things we learn from this chapter so i will stop over here and i implore and request you all to go through this chapter once at home so we will deal with some more of the chapters in the next videos to come so until then thank you very much